You want Laylatul Qadr to be accepted? What counts as catching Laylatul Qadr? As a believer, being awake at the time of Laylatul Qadr? <laughs> not doing anything to violate it, even if you just prayed Salatul Isha and you prayed Salatul Fajr and you attended some halaqat and you made some dhikr, you didn't backbite, you didn't sin, you didn't insult anybody, you didn't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are present on the night of Laylatul Qadr. Alhamdulillah, that's observing Laylatul Qadr. Inshallah ta'ala, the reward of Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr, that the night of Al Qadr is better than a thousand months, has been written for you. That is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you start with. First and foremost, be happy that you're here. Say Alhamdulillah that you're here. You're in a masjid in the last 10 nights. This is where you need to be. You are doing mushahada, you're witnessing the salah, you're witnessing the prayer in jama'ah in the last 10 nights in a masjid. You're attending a halaqah in the last 10 nights of a masjid. That's exactly what it is. Observe it. Now if Jibreel alayhi salam cursed the person who still manages to not be forgiven in Ramadan, where is that situated in? It's situated with sinfulness. A person who is disobedient to their parents, a person who does not send salawat on the Prophet at least the first time that they hear his name in a particular setting or gathering. It's sinfulness. What is wrong with you? How do you still miss out on the mercy of Allah? If that's the case for the month of Ramadan, imagine a person who sins on Laylatul Qadr. Think about it. Because there's a scheme here. The better the time or the place, the more severe the sin. A sin in Ihram is not like a sin outside of Ihram. A sin at Hajj is not like a sin outside of Hajj. A sin in Ramadan is not like a sin outside of Ramadan. A sin in the sacred months, the sacred months, is not like a sin outside of the sacred months. A sin in a sacred place or a, sac a sacred time is that much worse because at the bare minimum to observe means do not violate. Do not violate. You had 20 days to practice guarding this tongue, guarding your eyes, fasting. Consider the fasting of the night at this point. Do not violate these nights. If the only thing is you come and you sit here and you don't set, shed a single tear and you even sleep for a good part of the night, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write down Laylatul Qadr for you because you still could be amongst those who observe Laylatul Qadr because this is a gift from Allah to this ummah. If you don't mess up on Laylatul Qadr and you do the basics and you don't compromise it, you are observing of it, but not everyone catches it the same. Some people would put forth deeds on the night of Laylatul Qadr that make it worth even more than a lifetime. Some people will glorify Allah, will pray, will have a moment of qurb, a moment of closeness to Allah that make it better than 10 lifetimes, that make it better than 50 lifetimes, because not everyone catches it the same. You start with that first level of al-mushahada, then the second level is, what deeds am I doing in these last 10 nights? Can you imagine the Prophet ﷺ described as tying his waist belt in those last 10 nights? Take the Prophet ﷺ on an average night of qiyam. I can't imagine what his qiyam looked like in the last 10 nights. If he would cry until his place would be wet on a regular night, imagine the qiyam of the Prophet ﷺ in his tent in those last 10 nights. He gave life to the night, sallallahu alayhi Some of the sahaba, they came to the masjid, and it was like Eid for them in those last 10 nights. You know, subhanAllah, I was reading about Tamim ibn Aus al-Dari, rahimahullah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a companion. When he comes to the masjid in those last 10 nights, it's like Eid. He's wearing his best garment. He had a particular hulla, a particular garment that was reserved, a particular type of perfume for those last 10 nights, because it was special. These, these are the nights of Eid, the nights of celebration in the metaphorical sense, because I'm celebrating that closeness to Allah, subhanahu not everyone catches it the same way and that's where you want to build on observance and think about the deposits how can I make this night even better than a lifetime because the potential is there how can I do extra good deeds now how can I do extra dhikr how can I have a moment in my dua but at the bare minimum do not fail to observe the rights of these nights upon you there is al-mushahada, observance, and then there is al-amal biha, to do the deeds that are befitting of it, that honor the night. Observe the night, and then honor the night, the same way that you do with your fasting. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever fasts Ramadan with faith and accountability, Allah will give them the reward of being forgiven for all of their previous sins. Whoever stands on the night of Laylatul Qadr, 
imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu with faith and with a sense of accountability Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking its reward accountability and seeking its reward Allah will forgive all of their previous sins Allahumma innaka afu oh Allah you are the one who forgives you love to forgive forgive all of us and accept Laylatul Qadr from all of us make us amongst those that observe it and that honor it as well Allahumma ameen Jazakumullahu khairan